Before we get started with today's podcast, we'd like to ask returning listeners to leave us a rating or review on your favorite podcast platform, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you really enjoy it, share a link to this podcast with friends or family who would enjoy hearing our weekly discussions about basketball and basketball culture. Now, on to the show. Yeah, isn't it amazing when Michigan can keep this game to a 19-foot, 9-inch game inside that three-point line? It's all there. Nice move by Steve Fisher here. Turn it into the 19 19- Welcome to the 99 Podcast by HBS. We are down here in the podcast studio with Aaron Meyer, part of the HBS team, and Dan Woods, who is becoming a permanent HVSer. Uh, I've seen his game. He does shoot a lot, does not make a lot. So he fits right in around here. Uh, we brought. Uh, He's Aaron, just waiting on the paycheck now. Yeah. The audacity of that guy to bring up a paycheck. Like, no, none of us make money down here, buddy. Jesus. I don't think that's exactly how it went. That could, it's how it went down in my mind. That could be why he makes more money than us, because he's thinking about that. The richest not guy true. in the podcast is worried about getting paid for this. That is not accurate. We're just kidding, Dan, sort yeah. of, but you did kind of make an ass out of yourself. <laughs> Anyways, we're down here. This is the, the third part of the Blue Blood uh podcast series that we were starting to do and dan had a, a fair point we wanted to get aaron involved down here because we we thought once you get to kind of the tier three stuff is where the real arguments can kind of start and discussions can start um and that might just be arrogance on our behalf because we thought we did so good in the first two that you could not possibly argue against uh, the teams that were picked um uh, but but dan had a good point off air and i want him to share it with us that we it's not really aptly named blue bloods when you get to this point because there's only a a select few really that are the the true blue bloods but it's interesting and i'm i'm talking a lot here but it's interesting because aaron and i had a conversation uh in the hall today about like just the blue blood in general and what it takes to be a blue blood and how do you work yourself into it and should you be a blue blood just because you have the history and the the final fours and things like that so we could go a lot of different directions here i know we wanted to discuss some programs but um dan you want to share what you were talking about off air a little bit the hardest part about this is that the the true blue bloods were the three or the five that we did are like the true blue bloods like multiple national titles dominate their conference decade after decade after decade but now it's like all right, so what are we looking at? Like historically great programs? Or are we looking at people who now are, have had success and we think they're a good job? So I think you can go a couple of different ways. And I think we're going to try to blend it together of great programs now and use a little bit of their history going back. What if it's just old school and new school Blue Bloods? I mean, I think that there's – I mean, there's like the legacy going back because it's it, it's sort of like the NBA thing, too. It's you get so far back. Like, do you count those? We were trying to figure out the one IU one in the 50s. Like, that doesn't seem to even connect, but it does. I mean, we're still going to count it. So it's like, when do you do you segment it off or how do you do it? And then because college basketball has become so much more spread out and diverse, it, it becomes different, too, because you have recruiting has changed so much. You don't have UCLA winning 10 straight or, you know, it's just it's just different now, especially with the tournament expanding. It's just a different ball game. So you guys looked at it in the NBA podcast we did about <laughs> MVPs and first team all NBAs. I think Final Fours have to be the deciding factor because like we we went through and talked about Izzo being eleven Final Fours. Like he's got to be way up there, even though he has only has one title. Well, but but that's not program. You're talking coach. Yeah, but I'm just saying in general. We we uh, so program has to be Final Fours because. Winning is extremely difficult to get there. And Final Fours are only around since the 50s, which still that go- I, I agree with what you're saying going back that far. But it is like, the I, to me, when I looked at the gauge of good programs, Final Fours and how relevant they've been in the last two decades. Yeah, Final Fours are important. I think conference championships are important too. I, I said that in the last the last pod that we did. I think, I think it weighs in there. That's going to help me out later. You are a true Big East guy back in the day too, aren't you? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like you love the Big East back in the '90s, right? Oh yeah. 
Is it, I love. Does college. any does anyone not love the Big East in yeah, the nineties? Like, but you know what? If you talk to the New Yorkers and stuff, I mean, everybody loves the nineties with the Big East. But but there's like a, a an insane passionate eighties fan base of the Big East. Well, there should would, be. That, yeah, I mean, and got, it was awesome. I've got too. one of those teams that I'm going to bring up. But it was too. just that was just like uh, we were really little. You know us. I'm talking about the the three and of I us. I get lost in the nineties too because we were talking about the game in ninety five, and I was ten. Nine yeah. or ten. Yeah. It's just weird. It's hilarious. I just remember those marquee matchups so much in the Big East uh, growing up. Big Monday, um, and, Big and Monday, Big Monday was legit. <laughs> and then and then Tuesday was the Big Ten games, and those were legit as shit too. Yeah, I mean it was it was just wild. So I don't even know where we're going with this now. All right, you're the model. You're first. Yeah. Well, who's your first? Who's team? your first third tier team? Well, I I didn't rank them. I'll just throw one out there. I think I think well, I okay, I'll say that it has to probably start with Louisville, yeah. which was which is the one that you text me to um after I text my three that I would kind of wanted to talk about and we we're, we're thinking about Louisville is shit. One one national championship away from being like top tier. Or I mean, I it is all about how you decide it. I you know, that goes back to chicken and egg shit. I went back and looked at it, and if I could redo it again, I would put Louisville on my second tier. Because, so they, Crum, Run is just crazy. Two titles in there. Patino's there for 17 years and wins one and gets him back on the map. And the fact that it's one of the only jobs that's gotten better. The The venue they play in is great. The league they got into is great. It's, it's changed for the better. We talk about teams from the Big East, you know, the Big East getting back together. But we talked about how they had no identity for a while. Louisville went from nothing to the best league in basketball and has made a seamless transition. So, two things. Number one, it doesn't seem like Patino was there for 17 years. That's that's a long time. It is. I didn't, oh, I didn't 17. think that. And number two, you and I always go back and forth on the Yum Center. I love it. And I haven't been – so we, we got to go to other places that are great venues. But the Yum Center – Louisville Athletics, is, they've made themselves on the map. Calm down over there. You're getting way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the name, Yum. I, I mean, Yum did you see how happy name. that motherfucker just got? It's a the, horrible name. Do you have some? Do you have a suite there that we don't know about? <laughs> I have access to. Oh, it. see, oh, yeah, oh, here we go. Is, no. yeah. I have a t- there's a, there's a local tie to to Evansville to from Louisville. Mac played at U of E and has yeah. good close yeah. friends here, who I'm pretty pretty good friends with too so i love chris mack i think he's good think really he's really real good deal. yeah okay I so i gotta bring this up though about louisville because how much of the patino era do you discount i mean they lost final four they lost we don't do that this we is, don't do that down here this is a safe space meyer you should I, know that i'm just saying like that it doesn't count in the official stats i mean Neither does Reggie Bush win the Heisman. He's the greatest college football player I've ever seen play, probably. I just don't think you can well, – I'm not the judge or jury. I throw it out. I don't care if you cheat. So I'm you're really fine don't. if Barry Bonds is in the he baseball should be. He's the greatest thing. player I've ever seen. Absolutely. Okay. Baseball didn't police it, and college basketball didn't police it for the longest time, so therefore I don't care about a podcast 15 years later. Bang. <laughs> Just a reminder, he has a suite at the Yum Center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is on the payroll. And I'm a Michigan fan, and they beat Michigan. So, I mean, I don't even know what that gets you, but it's. It, I saw that happen. Trey Burke blocked the shot up against yeah, the what backboard. If, I mean, think about what if Michigan had won? That changes Michigan's history. But like, it one game but they got beat. everybody. They didn't win. Yeah. yeah, but they got beat. It they, was on the but court. But Louisville shouldn't have been there. They cheated oh, to, they cheated see, to get there. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't be the judge and jury. Why do we care if they're not going to police it? I don't know. I mean, they have a tape they, of Will Wade on LSU saying, we made a strong-ass offer, and they didn't do shit to him. <laughs> so what, well, what are we going to do? That's I, I feel like that's changed, though, the last couple of years because they didn't do anything to Arizona. They didn't do anything to Kansas. But they're, but Patino did lose his job. That at AD did, and they went back and looked at, at that some stuff point in time, and took but, those away. So, I mean, at, for at some point in the last couple of years, that changed. But um, as a Michigan fan, they took two – you know, final fours away from you guys too. I mean, and Jawan Howard's there. To, you know, I, I don't. I don't know. Like I, don't, I, I don't think that you. They can don't hang the. They didn't hang the banners those, back those, up though when he came. They need to go back up. They, they need do. to go back up. So you know That's what's in the joke. Yum Center? The the court from 2013 is still in the Yum Center. Yeah, the national championship court. When you walk in, they don't give a shit. They got paid. They won a title. It's 
It's part of why they're in the, no. I'm out. I don't care about that shit. I really don't. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent with you. It doesn't bother me one bit. No, it's part of what they are. I I'm don't just care. It's I, all, I, all in the game, wire fans. It's all in the game. I don't. I don't know. I, I'm just kind of in a. It's a weird space because it's like they policed it differently now, and I think that now that it's changed, I think I could. I can look the other way, and I would have looked the other way then, if it hadn't cost other teams. And I just feel like it changed changed the legacy. I mean, as an IU fan, so no no other teams they played had paid players on they the team. Probably did, but exactly. I mean, it's different than when you get caught, though. You know, like it just it changes things. But they've well, done I mean, nothing to the people who get caught. Patino got Not in now. Like now. that's what I'm saying. Like that's a very recent thing where they just it seems like the NCAA has blanket decided nothing we are not doing anything. Like maybe the FBI can arrest you and take you to prison like they did with uh right. with Chuck really Burke with the, with with the riflemen. Either, they didn't get much. I mean the riflemen's got pretty big trouble the for that. The other day Aminati was in the in the court and they said Nike admitted to paying DeAndre Ayton and those guys and it just under the rug. No one cares anymore. So therefore, I don't care. About well, that. because a lot of the public opinion has swayed in favor of the players being yeah. paid. Yeah. Period. And you know that with the the California bill and all I that know. stuff, like society's changed. Like what Meyer was saying. I'm fine. Was, with, I'm fi- look blanket statement. I'm fine with it. I think it, it's weird that it's been under the radar for that long. I just think it puts the game in a weird place. It's like the PEDs thing. It's like they. They they need to at least acknowledge it, like put the banners back up, and then say, "But this ha- big this ass ass some, asterisk over. Yeah, some, don't care. Like, some <laughs> don't care. But I yeah, mean, I'm with put, you. I put Bonds in the Hall of Fame and just say he. By the way, he played in an era where steroids were rampant. Like fine. he he made us a lot of money because we turned our heads and looked the other I way, know. so he could ha- hit a bunch of home runs and we could make money off exactly. of him. Exactly. We kept having to get a bigger hat every yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> these schools paid these players so we could make a lot of money in our tournament. Yeah. Anyone else arguing Agreed. Louisville? Anyone else arguing that Louisville is a fringe? No. I think there's a couple fringe, like really good programs. I think Louisville is the the leader of that one. Well, I think I think the the three other ones I had on the list um, could could be argued. It, it it's so weird because like all these programs to me are incredible, insane. Like I love them, love them. Like want licensing with all of them because I just want to make the shit so I can wear it. Fair, but they don't have the national championships. Louisville's got three though. No, no, Louisville's not. I, I said the yeah. other three. Okay, fair. So I was looking at when I was scratching down some notes was uh, Syracuse, Maryland, and Arizona were the three others that I wanted to discuss. Discuss. <laughs> Syracuse lightning in a bottle, but it's a long bottle. I mean, he's been there forever. Beheim. We I love mean, we love the lightning in a bottle. We need it, to do our own pot. Did you look yeah. up, is there anybody b- before Beheim at Syracuse? I don't even know he's been there so long. That's a great question. Yeah. yeah. No. no. The answer is no on my end. Yeah. And he, he's perfected it. Don't leave the state of New York for a long time. Play a 2-3 t- zone match. Or just figure that out. And then, I mean, he... But, I listened to the Gottlieb thing where he's talking about, you know, he's, there's been years where he's had superior athletes and he thought the zone hurt him. But he's also been on some runs with some very average teams too. You got to prepare for that zone in a day turnaround in the tournament. I think that helps tremendously. Well, it's like uh, Tom Cream would probably still be coaching at IU if, if he was able to beat that Syracuse team. He also had a week to prepare just for the record. Yeah. Four days. But. Also also had shooters and talent and should have beat them. <laughs> They just lost. Bait was taken by the yeah. two IU fans in the room. <laughs> two Man. top five yeah. picks or whatever it was. Yeah. Four. So I don't. I, Syracuse, man, one national title. I know it's crazy, Mello. right? But but, Mello. but but you you value conference championships too. So you value them making runs in the Big East and being a part of that. So that I get. But I, I they, they got a lot of Final Fours too. They got a decent amount. I, I, look it up. I got you. Um, but they, you know, like Beheim could have three three national championships. Key smart shot. He has six Final Fours. Six they, Final Fours. Syracuse in general has six. You're right. Pretty good. That's pretty legit. What, is, what does IU have all time? Eight? Yeah. So one coach has six for Syracuse? I'd, I'd put them in there. I mean, I think it's – and they've kind of perfected, too, the just taking that New York area athletes. I mean, all those other schools around there that – I've got one of them on my list, and – it just seems like Syracuse has has a uh, consolidated that and gets the the cream of the crop from that area. Let me ask you this question because you haven't been a part of one of these pods yet, and I I feel like Dan and I have probably discussed this. 
how much does having an icon or legendary players go into where you rank these programs? I think it should because, I mean, being blue blood is like – being memorable right <laughs> like there's a right. again one of the teams one of the teams i'm just gonna go ahead and bring up one of my teams because i was like blown away by temple being in the top five ever in ncaa wins i mean i was wondering kind of trying to trying to think like where just total number of wins fits into all this because like i was kind of surprised by quite a few of the teams up there in notre dame and there's just some that i don't think of as like great programs but are way up there and wins and i maybe it's just that they've been around for a long time which is some of it but they have to have at least consistently be a winning program throughout so, a long duration. Two things there. One, I would look back at like when they started playing relative yeah. to everybody else. But they're but they're not. It's not a. It's not like football. Football's wild with that shit. Right. But te- but Temple. You know what I mean? They're not like fifty years more than Duke right. or but North I, Carolina. What I'm saying, you know and I, mean? I wasn't I wasn't dispelling Temple. Yeah. I was just saying like I would look back at that and see when everybody had a program no and doubt. started playing. Yeah. And then two, if if you do value icons and legends, Syracuse has a ton. Right, I a think ton. so. Ton. I think smooth? it makes huh? Big smooth, big smooth. Sam Perkins went to North Carolina. Oh dang it! How am I thinking? Get the hell out of here, Coleman. <laughs> Coleman. Coleman. Fire Coleman. up! Sorry, sorry, sorry. DC. Sorry, sorry. Uh, that sorry. is. Hey, a good that, one, though. that's Before actually big time. smooth. Yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> JB smooth. <laughs> God. Yeah, I mean they had That's some okay. legends. Pearl Left, Washington, both lefties. So you're on the right track. We got your back. I appreciate you, you that. Can sit, I sit got back scolded down. Down. You can <laughs> <laughs> The mellow run with the with cornrow mellow, Smile, smiling mellow. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. If he would have stayed, they could have won the next year too. Because man, he was a good college player. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> but you're, you're key. You're a key smart shot away from yeah. a national championship in '87. And then you get back to the national championship and you just run into one of the greatest college teams ever, the yeah. 96 Kentucky team. This is a Dean Smith that's argument, the, that's too, That's with right? John Wallace. Like, Dean Smith, same thing. Like, right. Didn't but really that, that Syracuse run was good, and that team was really good. Really good. Can really I, good. Can I bring up my, my Kentucky stat now that we have this, that you brought up the 96 Kentucky team? Oh boy. Yeah, go for it. So I was researching Rick Pitino because uh, I didn't realize how long he was there. Hey, you are the uh, according to Myers intro. You are the college basketball historian yeah. of the group, which right. is the complete blood. bullshit. Absolute garbage. <laughs> he, pro- he proved that a <laughs> second ago. So time out. The dumbest, blo- <laughs> the dumbest historian we've ever met, for sure. So Patino takes over in '89, and that first year they were there, they were ineligible for his first two years. So we'll take out first year goes 14 and 14, second year goes 22 and six. Then the next run he goes on from '91. They go twenty nine and seven first in the East, thirty and four, Elite Eight Final Four, twenty two and seven round of thirty two, twenty eight and five Elite Eight, thirty four and two champion, thirty five and five runner up, and then he leaves, and then they win the following year. Yeah, crazy. So tub, I mean, talking about tub, the, tubby, and you only think he was there from. And they were only eligible from the tournament from 91 to 97 when he was there. So all that run is in the same time. And then he wins the next year. So the run he put together at Kentucky is. He's good. He came to Louisville and contributed to their blue blood status. Right? What if he never leaves Kentucky? What, is, what, what kind of damage are, does he do? They're your one anyway. Yeah, but they are. Yeah, because he plays by. He's Louisville. a better coach than Cal Perry. So, I mean. That's, uh, but, but I'm asking, like, what, what kind of. National Bob, championship Bob numbers does he have? It's a Bob Knight run. He he gets more than three. Maybe more, yeah. I don't know. It's just so hard to oh. win a man. I I don't know if he does. Like if he might get that five, he but, I mean, but he comes back and wins at Louisville. If he's know, coming but, back and winning at Louisville, then he can he can stay at Kentucky and win. And he knows yeah, the best job in the country. You, you always overestimate that. I mean, everybody. I agree. When Shaq I and Kobe were together, like they're gonna win ten championships. They won three. They like, should have. I know you you say that, but there's just weird stuff that happens when you start to get that big. Like, people start, you know, just weird stuff starts happening. when You can only maintain that high level of success for so long, except for John Wooden. Which, what, are they, what are they called? The the power of more or the power is. of me or yep. whatever it is. Yep. There's some truth to it. It is. Everybody gets fat off that they success. Do. The, the, you, your assistants start looking elsewhere. You have to bring in new. It just is. Things spin See, too See, I don't fast. think things like that in college basketball matter. But like, when does this crew get fat off success? That's the that's the real question. <laughs> what I Tell asked earlier, got scolded for it. <laughs> well, now you have me thinking. I'm a little bit nervous that we're not making money yet with this shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> so back off the tangent, how do we get there? Oh, Syracuse. They're up there. I mean, you have to be. And, it, and it's hard because it's one guy's been there for, what, 40-some-odd years? And yeah. He played there. By the way, he's 75, and his son's a sophomore. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Good for him. Good for him. I should have wore so, my Bayheim character. You should have. So if you're bringing up sus- sustained success, then I, I'm bringing up my my new school blue blood, and I'm bringing in Dan, Dan's I'm already bringing in Gonzaga. No. I know he's winding. He's up already on shaking it. his head. <laughs> he's winding up. No. But I, I looked. Dan, at, Dan, put the gun away. I Dan looked it up. Put the gun away. I'm gonna make a bold statement here. I I would rather take the last 20 years of uh, Gonzaga basketball over the last 30 years of IU basketball. Not well, a chance. I, I don't, I'm telling you, they've made the tournament the last 21 straight years. They've got a Final Four. They've made the Elite Eight a bunch of times. They're competitive every year. They win conference tournaments. They've won 30 games. Like As a fan, like the thing I want to do is cheer for good teams, N- know that my team has a chance to win every time they step out, not go up to Purdue and – put up 49 points like (laughs) i just that's the only point of being a fan like i've spent now 20 years of my life watching iu teams that are pretty much always subpar like that's they play absolutely no one and they've never won they've been to one final four they've been a one overall how many has iu been doing the last 20 years 30 you said 30 years i did but i'm, I'm saying even, even in the last I used 20 been the exact same amount of final fours as they have One. think about that and they've been no th- they've been to more they went in 2003 in, and they went in 92 uh, no, in the last 30 I'm sorry, 20, I, I, 20. I switched it back to 20 so 20 well, you can't do that shit like i'm I, not no, great at math no, no. <laughs> <laughs> i just said i would take yeah. the last the last 30 years but mark we uh, like comparing so i think I'm on, I'm on this is I'm where on. i get confused so this is great coach mark few is in a great spot and he's made it a really who else could have done that too like no, that's I mean, why. That's where I think we get program coaching and, and everything confused. Mark Few, if he wanted to, could have taken another job and been good. But they've been one Final Four. But they've choked a bunch. A ton too. of Elite Eights, though. We don't give Sean Miller a ton of credit for going to a bunch of Elite Eights, though. I, I he's got him Arizona on there. I mean, we're talking. Yeah, third but we're talking tier. Loot Olson. I think. Arizona I think they're right in that. Too. I think they're right in that like jumble with Arizona I think, and some of the I, others that he you, brought up. You'll never convince me of Gonzaga until they win one. And and they're not – here's the problem. They don't play – so IU goes 10-0 in a terrible conf, in a terrible non-conference schedule. Gonzaga, same way. They don't – how many how many times on the road can they go get beat? I, Every game in the Big Ten you can go on the road and get beat besides Northwestern or, or Nebraska right now. The, the, there is no sustained success. What few has done there is incredible, and that's that's admired. They've made the tournament 21 straight years. How is that not sustained success? What more do you want as a college Because if you program? guys, if us three, and we grab Shoebridge and one other drunk off the floor, we could go beat the Washington Middle School basketball team every year and get to the tournament. Are you calling Shoebridge a drunk? <laughs> oh, I said one other drunk. <laughs> one other. That means uh, one of the yeah, four. one of them. That ain't me. <laughs> I, mean, I do have a beer. <laughs> but no, I just – I. What, what few has done is great. I, I just think the degree of difficulty, like it needs to be credited. Like the fact that they make the tournament every single year from from that position, they ha- they are playing people. Like the turn, they're like the they the, all the things like they have those quad one wins. Like everything is like analytical now. It's not like it was back in the day where you could just be like thirty wins. Let's put them in. I mean, they're, they're, my, but my buddy, get in now. My, my buddy has. Uh, out at New Mexico State, and they've got uh, they won like the one of the longest winning streaks in the country, and they're like a 13 seed right now. So not everyone gets credit for just winning games, like they are beating people or just beating the pants off people, and then that's the way they get the credit for it. He's done a great job out there, but it's not a blue blood. It's not even. I mean, this third team, it's it's we're not talking. But you even said at the beginning we're not ta- really talking blue bloods anymore. This is like elite, one final elite four pro- though. We we have, we've left everyone off with one. We haven't mentioned Ohio State, and they have eight final four. Maybe we should. Is no, that, I think is that I you're think, bringing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that who you're bringing up? Put them on the list. <laughs> because no, they're, they're definitely because they're on the list. Yeah, they're me? for sure. I think them in who Louisville the fuck left the Ohio State off the list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, said, I thought someone had did it. I was like eight final four. <laughs> I didn't cross them. They're I don't six? remember crossing them off the list. <laughs> they do have the oh, they have the Odin you are the, run. That's a pretty good. You're the one. historian, buddy. <laughs> if you if Ohio State's not on the list, it's your fault. I rated it for fucking Gonzaga and Ohio State, so stop it. But no, Ohio State. I mean, like. Few few is a great basketball coach in a position where he's never going to leave, and that is is a great yeah, fit for he? all them. Because at some point in time, you want to challenge yourself too, though. 
what 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 programs yeah. out there that he's jumping to? I don't know, man. Where I'm, you, I'm somewhere in the middle. Of where the do road. you go? Like, where do I'm you go? somewhere on the middle of the road of this. I, I think Dan Dan's point of uh, is not necessarily against Gonzaga, although it comes across kind of against yeah. Gonzaga. I don't think that's what he's he's saying. I think it's more for the other programs that haven't been mentioned or that this group that we're talking about now. So if you just took it and you said, what are the best programs of the last 25 years? You would never make an argument against Gonzaga being in there. They would be right up there. I mean, they, they, they have had sustained success. They are a really good program. I just program. think that that's part of it, though. Like, think about – it's so weird being a fan because I think that people do love, as an IU fan, they do, we do love talking about the past. But at some point, like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe there's a crossover point in culture where people are more interested in just, like, talking about things. We're talking about stuff now. So maybe everyone's just more interested in talking about the program rather than watching the basketball games. But I love watching basketball, too. And I just think as a fan, I want to watch a superior product or my team win the majority of the time. And that's I think they get right. in there on that. Right. So I where I agree with you is I'd trade the last 20 years of IU basketball wow. for Gonzaga. Everybody would. I would 100 percent. No, no, Man. no question about it. One overall I would not. I would not have done the 31. I would not have done the yeah. 30 years. I was trying to be bold. I would do – it was super, super bold, yeah. super aggressive. Yeah. Then Dan got flustered and got really <laughs> aggressive over there. Uh, so I, I would take that, obviously, because of the, the sustained winning. But there's nobody on earth that would take the Gonzaga work of body as a whole over the IU but program. Th- but it, that's only because we like – we like to associate ourselves with that legacy and talk about it. Not because we ever got to see any of that. I never saw any of that. See, I would just saw, you saw eighty seven and you saw ninety two. I, did, I didn't. I lived in Kansas and well that's your own goddamn fault. <laughs> so would, that's your parents' so, fault. I know. Yeah. So I would strongly disagree with that because so the thing that makes the IU uh, we use IU because it's around us, you went there. We we just it's it's so what we're we're close to. But the IU, when few leaves, who is going to fight for that job? Oh, I think there'll be some interest yeah. in that job. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. But the part of me. Aaron Meyer, I'll front runner. He's up. already got his I resume am. ready. Got it. <laughs> Guess who the bag men are? <laughs> that's how we get paid? Shoe bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the part of being, I mean, it's what makes the these jobs better. And I think that we get so far, we get program and coach mixed up so much is that the success of Gonzaga is under one human being, and he's incredible at what he's done. So, therefore, I mean, you guys just brought up Syracuse. Yeah, but that I, I get that. But he's also been a six Final Fours and has a title. We are lumping. You are trying to lump them in the same level. He's also won the Big East a million times. He's one of the most iconic places there is. You can't name me five great Gonzaga games in the past twenty years outside the NCAA tournament. But I can name you a million great Syracuse games. I mean, they're not relevant outside of the NCAA tournament. I don't know. Some some of that is location, though, too, yeah, right? For and sure. Conference and stuff. I think it's but why that, it makes but it, that it makes also does, 12. and that also does go into the 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 blue blood in the tier. Because out of the great programs, who are you recruiting against in the West Coast anymore? UCLA and Arizona. But other than that, who are you scared to go up against in recruiting? Why don't they just join the Pac-12? Basketball only, right? Yeah. So I mean, we do it everywhere else. That'd be great. I'd love yeah. to see Gonzaga in the Pac-12. It's probably money. The price of but the Pac-12 needs the money. money. It would be a great draw for them. They probably they probably want a certain amount though to, to you know. I to can't get believe on I'm the only one fighting back on Gonzaga, even though you were kind of policing. I'm okay with that. I understand. I'm the usually the most level-headed person here. <laughs> So let's go. Let's you, go. You can laugh into the mic, Meyer, st- when I say stuff like we that. We can <laughs> say we can say West I Coast. Want, I didn't want to snot on the mic. <laughs> I, the problem. I think the hardest one on this list is Arizona. How so? Go ahead. I was going to say I, I think I'd put them over Ohio State. You would say that just, again. I, I just think if we're talking like you know if we're just straight ranking them, I would rank Arizona above Ohio State. Just are you done being on your high horse of paying players now? <laughs> no, I, like I said, I. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> because Sean Miller, he has is Arizona, know, no doubt. But the thing is, like, he didn't. And by the way, hundred thousand. They didn't. Do, what did they do? They should have paid him twelve times that. What did? Worth the, here's here's the thing. Like the NCAA had by that point decided to do nothing. Like yeah. I mean, I, it's so weird. That Arizona team shit. Because here's bed, the thing, too. right? 
the eight. A and lot D. of Arizona teams have shit the bed. This is the this True. is the sort of where I, where I get in, I, and I do agree with you on this. It's but it's confusing, right? The NBA. You can't tell me that no NBA players were using PEDs during that era. Like Rashard Lewis, good good example. During the NBA Finals, got tested for PEDs. Then the following year, got suspended for PEDs. So that means he was using PEDs during the NBA Finals in 2009, pl- playing. But it's just how it's policed and how it's enforced that informs how we have to look at it. So if you take away the Final Four of the championship – it just seems like it has to matter in some way, right? If uh, Ben Johnson running the 100-yard dash and they take away that world record, I mean, do you, we don't say he's the fastest man alive. He he wasn't. They took Who's the record Who's Ben Johnson away. and what 100-yard dash did he run? <laughs> he was a sprinter on steroids. Like, it was a it was a thing in the 80s. From Canada. He was. See? That should have tipped knows. everybody <laughs> off right away. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was this 100 run on – ice skates or <laughs> but if but if the, like Usain Bolt came out and they said uh, he's he was on steroids you know five years ago but then they don't take the record away I don't know like I don't know what to do with that it just you think seems way different. too much about this I don't care cheat all day don't it just care. seems different I'm, it, I'm, it I'm does, I, I understand I'm fine by the way I'm fine with it I think it's biz- absolutely bizarre the way they police it now like you can fly to Germany and get plasma rich platement in injection but you can't take human growth hormones i think recover. this is a like, completely I don't understand. different conversation well he brought it up because of uh miller getting paid and not an air and he was arguing that then arizona yeah, shouldn't be on, paying, on the list i pay, think that paying people should. doesn't make them better basketball players peds make somebody a better athlete well, makes them not eligible is what it makes them though they according they to the ncaa be, they shouldn't even be well that's what we're talking about is ncaa Maybe we shouldn't be talking about the incident. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> no, how many Arizona – because what, what Arizona team shit the bed versus uh, Illinois? Was that the Illinois that oh That was Salim Stoudemire he in that re- group. He was yeah. – Lefty, about, lucky oh, lefty. Man, I, I know you lefties. I loved him. He's had some – I mean, Lou Olsen You should look up his stats. shooting stats. Um, you want to talk about stats. That guy could light it up. Like Who else 50% was on from team? the season for the season from three. What he, Arizona team? That, what how about your how about your boy that? how about your boy that you loved at Arizona? Gardner yeah that team went Indiana to the national boy. championship no. got beat by Duke yep. Battier those yep. guys then they obviously won in ninety seven with yep. Bibby and yep. Simon that was in Indy beat Kentucky team right yeah beat them yeah. in the phone posits the penny phone posits <laughs> remember that you probably don't you were like eight no I know the phone. <laughs> come on how old are, were you in ninety seven twelve eleven oh, 12. eleven but I know the phone posits you were like sure. a big eleven though <laughs> yeah I was probably like. Five four one seventy two. Yeah, if I, as a teenager, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll bump you up to the lead. You were at least sixteen. So yeah, that that team was awesome. But then you go back. I, I love the Arizona team on uh, Coach K's college basketball. I, oh I mentioned that before with uh, Mighty Mouse, Damon Stoudemire, loved him. Khalid Reeves. So was, time out. How many Final Fours does Arizona have? I don't know. Not, I didn't, not, probably not that many. I didn't do research on this. Anybody, pod. Just guess. I know I'm gonna take a guess. Five. I'd, same. Four. You should have guessed four. It's I already so had crazy. five. How, who the hell takes the same I, number? I actually thought it was five. We'll just make it up. I said it first. Jeez. A lot, lot of good players. can't play any games If now. I think you're good. right, then why am I going to take a different number? <laughs> Always so difficult down here. Runner up once, title once. So, yeah. Interesting. What What are the years on their final fours? 88. 94, 97, and 01. Say that again. I'm sorry. 88, 94, 97, and 01. Okay, so the crazy thing is, and I, I think pretty highly of myself with college basketball stats and Final Fours and stuff, I do not remember them being in 88, and I do not remember them being in 94, and the 94 one kills me because I love the 94 Final Four. Arkansas, Florida, Duke. And then it had to be in Arizona. And I would have never came up with that. And What's now you guys one? have ruined my weekend. What was the weird one Mississippi State got in? And it had the wrong name on the hat. Their ne- they had Mississippi on the hat. 96? Yeah. So it was that was Syracuse, Mississippi State, Kentucky, and UMass in 96. I told you I pride myself on this shit. Yeah, no, I, yeah that's why I asked that. 
But we talk about Arizona having a lot of NBA guys too, though. Big time. Like really, really good. And not even like younger people like me would say, well, Walton, Luke Walton, like Luke Walton's not even in like like the discussion of the great, like Miles Simon, Mike Bibby, Richard Jefferson, Richard Jefferson, Jason Terry, Damon Stoudemire, Mighty Mouse. Love that tattoo. Remember the Nike poster DeAndre that was just Aiden. the tattoo? DeAndre, DeAndre Aiden. Aiden for 100 grand is like literally the steel of the century. <laughs> but they didn't do anything with him, though. That's went to the eight, though. No, no, they didn't. Oh, that's right. Aiden was Aiden. They those guys. I picked them to win the national championship. But they got beat in the first round. Yeah. But okay, so with me with Arizona and 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 with all these schools, part of it is their logos, their uniforms, their style. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. All that yeah. stuff. Like Arizona's so up the there. Pockets line up with the lines. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you're giving away the pocket secret over there oh, too. Sorry, I mean I was <laughs> talking about something else. So. Arizona's in there. Even though one national title and four Final Fours, through our lifetime, they've been relevant. Really good. Yeah, a bunch of players. And they're the only other West Coast school outside of UCLA that you even like would say is relevant in the last 25 years. Legendary coach. I think that helps. Mm -hmm. Lou Dolson. And he won multiple places before. People too. don't know that either, by the way. I know. Isn't that crazy? Maybe a little bit before our like, time. He finishes there. But he's actually – I went back and looked at it because he's – I'm I'm young compared to like what he his run, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so so what, who else so, so one other team I I want to be sure to mention because they're way up there for me and I've I've been obsessed with them, uh, forever and they beat my Hoosiers in the in the O three our Hoosiers I should say yeah in O three don't don't you were don't, there don't cut me out of that you were there I was there it, you you were at the final four of the national championship game both or both you we, went to we, both we, I bought Kansas tickets or bought. As, on the way from out, the Kansas fans when they lost. Yeah. So the so the team is obviously Maryland, and and here here's my Maryland take: Gary Williams, Lefty Drizel, Lynn Bias, Juan Dixon, Joe uh, Joe Smith, number one pick, Stevie Franchise, Cole Fieldhouse, a turtle as the mascot. Can we get Scott Van Pelton here? Le <laughs> legendary. <laughs> oh, uh, shout out to Stanford Steve, by the way, wearing wow, our Hoosiers that's, that's caricature on uh, Daily Wager on ESPN the other day. Um, Maryland is way up there. I wish they still played in Cole Fieldhouse, though. Like, I, I'm really – that was kind of like their, their hinkle, you know what I mean? And uh, they've moved out, turned it into a football facility, the indoor football facility. Hmm. So, uh, that's my Maryland take. I uh, can't I can't get behind it. Okay, explain. Two Final Fours. Both both with Williams had them in, right? Because they got beat by Duke in the one where Duke made that crazy crazy comeback. They had Duke beat. So they could have really went back to back when they won it. The best three. part about it is they used to literally just make shirts that said it wasn't like like duck fook. Like they literally made shirts that said fuck Duke. <laughs> wow. I mean like you have to respect that. You they have were to respect flat that. Out aggressive. How many how many A C C championships? Do you know? Give me a minute. What, they Wi-Fi down great, here sucks. Great, great podcasting. Uh, bu right? <laughs> budget cuts. Could you look that up for me? <laughs> so they have they only have four elite eights. That seems oh one and oh two. Okay, it seems a little light. Seems a little light. Seems a little light. But but what to th so throw out another team? You guys have another team? I, I mean, would Maryland did Maryland jump off the paper uh, at you of like, man, I got a challenge. Only this one. because I, yeah, they only. Yeah. The, the, I'll be honest. The only reason they jumped off the paper for me is that I was there to see them and I was a good team. But I, I, I don't think of them even. They're they're an afterthought to me. It's different now that they're in the Big Ten. It does seem like that's raised their credentials a little bit, but. I never even Which is considered. Crazy. It. See, I, I, I never disagree with that them. part. Yeah. I know, but I, I never like even them in the ACC. I, there's man. three teams that I, would I never put ahead thought of them. about them in there. Huh? There's three teams I'd put ahead of them. Okay, go for it. This will be interesting. And are, oh wait, are, did you just pull up like a list of Final Four appearances to go off? I've of? had this, but no, I've always saw it. Uh, the, Georgetown. Yeah, Georgetown is up there. Just because of the allure of Georgetown, and it's even. That's a know, really good pick. I think that one's interesting. I think also Florida. Billy Donovan went back to back with some two great teams, and it's kind of that goes wins. against your argument though, because you said still have two not, titles. Not, you said not coach for Mark Few. I mean, Florida, they still have five Final Fours. Florida's though. just N name the just years on Billy the Final Donovan. Fours. I know they were in '94, and I know the two that they won the national championship in. What's so the other Florida one? has '94, 2006, seven, and fourteen. 
Oh, that's right. They made it. They made it. Actually, long probably had one of the. He had the one overall seed too. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that was fourteen. That's just Donovan. Though. Give me, give me Georgetown. Like, there is Georgetown Florida, was one is that Florida at all relevant now. Like I time out, but I, but I, I'm with you with Donovan too. too. Yeah. But even before, like not great before him. Yeah. But man. I mean, they not went relevant. To, they went to the Elite Eight in 6, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17. They had a great run. I mean, that's an unbelievable run. It and is. a lot of these. But that's why I wanted Billy Donovan to be IU's next coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it was, I think it's still going to happen, guys. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I'm he's, kidding, Dan. He's Calm doing, down he's over doing, there. I pray that it never happens. He's doing great <laughs> at, with the Oklahoma City. Yeah, yes. Chris Paul's Man. been a great thing. Chris for him. Paul. Everybody Hunter said he was toast last year. All right, Georgetown. Out, James National. Harden was not good. So, for him. so okay. Here's my thing with Georgetown. Here's here's my Georgetown. You got to take thing. one I'm out too. So this is so here's here's the Georgetown thing, and the reason that I didn't have Georgetown because I think Georgetown is super relevant in college basketball history. Obviously, it, yes. with Big John Thompson, Iverson, uh, you know, Patrick Ewing, all the the those teams i guess why they because you guys know i go off all field i don't even research the numbers and that's yeah. why i'm asking you like well i don't know shit how many final fours did they make but so much of that john thompson stuff was when like before my time i was like two three yeah. and four years old when they were making the the ewing runs final so, fours yeah in the final fours and yeah. stuff too but the hoya paranoia and all that you can't tell the the story of college basketball without georgetown a hundred percent. But they, I think that's why, and they would have been in my, my next group, I would have had them because I would have done, I would have got them in there. See, but I'd, I'd bump them up into this group. Because for I sure. Think, like, I think you're right. Cultural impact. Like they, that, that absolutely. The revolution in like changing how the game is played. And I think that matters too. Like, absolutely. You might, people n might not love Steph Curry, but I mean. Change the game. Change the game. That matters on some level. Yeah, correct. I, I, I'm, I'm all, my, all on board with that. So the, the final fours for them, 43, I can't count. Like that, uh, don't get me out of there with that one. That one didn't count. Too. That's, that's pre-NCAA tournament, right? 43 is. Yeah. yeah. But they still have it listed on here. And then 82, 84, 85, and 07. You see, that it was so much of when I was just a baby. Yeah. It's I, a I was of, big for a baby, though. Yeah, for sure. Gary. I mean, I trust <laughs> Gary. <laughs> see, uh, what I love about this is you're making my argument for being a Gonzaga fan because you want to watch the team that's winning now. Like, you're, you're, you, like yeah, I, talk, I, I, you like see, to talk George about the old school teams and what they meant, but... Imagine but Georgetown's still relevant to me. Now. Like when Georgetown's on TV, I'll still watch them. I, I, I why? I, I, I don't know. Mac McClung. No, that's <laughs> no. It's a good name drop too, though. <laughs> it, it Georgetown's is. are great. I just I still like the Big East a yeah, lot, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But the last one's interesting to me because I think it's I want like, them to be good. I guess is what I'm saying. Like there's yeah. teams that I want to be really yeah. good. Georgetown's one of them because I think it's good for basketball. But you know, is it lightning They're in not. a bottle with John Thompson? too Definitely. you know they try to they try to sun it's the it's the iu <laughs> stuff man yeah it is it it's, is it's night it's iu it's all you know i'm gonna take back i would only put two in front of you the other one i was gonna say is i think it's a polarizing place and it's a very difficult job illinois illinois is interesting it's so interesting to me because meyer hates it <laughs> why like, what are, you better bring some stats for to to the table on this one because I I actually do agree with him a little bit, but it's it's yeah, no, I don't think I've ever thought it's, about it's it a little bit of a this moment. But so so I get killed in Indiana saying this. Illinois has twice as many NBA players as Indiana, and I know yeah, Chicago matters that. on that. But Illinois is a polarizing place, and it's always been. It's a job that comes open all the time, and when it does, people talk about how great of a job it is too. And I think Underwood has done it phenomenal so, job there so i text you guys we are talking about the ncaa though right now because you could argue that uh cal Pire is a better coach than patino based on nba players because he's had a million nba players but i would never even consider that he's a better coach than patino because the ncaa championships the final fours the teams he put together that's what matters right I feel like that was yeah. directed at you, Dan. Yeah, no, I, I, that, that, that for <laughs> sure matters. And I think Illinois is a grasp at straws because when they're right, they're right, and it's a, it's a great place to be. So I text you guys. What was that? Maybe two weeks ago. I text you guys a lot now. It's, it's fun. You'll man. fire like six in a row. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know which one to respond to. Can I respond to this one first? Right. So that's my texting strategy. Uh -huh. Is if I put it all in one text, then you only get one alert. <laughs> 
So what I do is I'll take a paragraph and break it into seven texts. So it just lights your phone up where you're like, shit, this is important. It's like the crackhead on the side of the street. Like it, It's bad. Comparing me to a crackhead is, is very, <laughs> I don't very... mind it because that's how I text. It <laughs> drives my wife crazy. She gets so upset because she's a paragraph texter. Anyways, I text you for the, the FS1 All Access, and I ask you guys if you'd ever watch that. And it was the Penn State Illinois game, so it was Underwood was coaching, and he was it was incredible to watch. And it wasn't from like an X's and O's standpoint at all. It was it was basically like, all right, I put in all this shit before we played. I'm like, go out, <laughs> go out and do it. <laughs> you know, I think that's very the little part of coaching now. Very very little communication. Not that he wasn't into the game, but the timeouts was there wasn't much said. Mm-mm. Um. And maybe that's the college game now because we were at the USI game, remember, sitting behind the bench, and, and they weren't saying hardly anything during timeouts and stuff. We kind of looked at each other like, man, that's a, that's a lot different than when we played basketball when the coach just and like, no talked one got, your ear off. No one got motherfucked. And we thought for <laughs> sure there was a couple times that it was going to happen, and nobody said a word. <laughs> we, yeah, the whole USI team almost fought the guys behind the bench too, and those guys were your, your buddies, not me. I just sat there, I'm like, I was just pointing at you guys when they turned and looked at me. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I'm not getting in on this. Three is wild. I think this is why I think this part is so hard because you have to you have to blend a little bit. You have to go old to new. You have to go runs. Gonzaga's somebody who's high, but I understand what they're saying, the the run of that. I I just I th- three is probably my favorite one to do. Because you can go a bunch of different ways. There's yeah. no – the first three, everybody agrees on. The first five teams, we can't even argue. Yeah, because you can only go a few directions on that in general. Yeah. This one, you can go a million. It's been fun, though. It's been a blast. Well, I mean, it's been okay. I wouldn't call it a blast. <laughs> Do we have another beer? It could be, it could be better. <laughs> Don't forget to like and Let's subscribe. Let's turn into a blast. <laughs> I can't wait for you and Meyer to have a wrestling contest to see if Gonzaga belongs or not. That's going to be the determining factor. I'm a three-time rights New, leader school new champion. Not new a school. <laughs> We're playing one-on-one. Dan, you've We're, not, al- We're not wrestling. Dan, you've always been a big kid. That's, yeah. That comes as no shock to me at all. All right. I appreciate you guys coming down, man. That was fun. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the 199 podcast with HVS, the high-volume shooters. For more information, check out the blog at 199.com under HVS. And while you're there, pick up some of the best basketball apparel on the planet. Until next time.